Hello, good, uh, good morning again. So let's go for video number two now. So we're starting here from what, we s we, what I explained on part one, which is what happens on a host. So this is timeline on the server by that's moving a, a little block to the right. And I explain what happened. Um, so the discrete steps of calling fixed update network that actually move the, the data about the transform or Net, any network variable that you might have. And the relation between that and what you actually normally see as interpolated target. Now we're gonna reset this whole thing here and start over with, we'll ignore the interpolation part on the server because we'll start understanding what happens on a client. And we'll start by th uh, planning about what, um, what the client does um, in respect to an object that it is predicting locally. Then later I'll add another client so we can see what that other client sees about what this first client did here. So that would be so. So we're going to be talking about a client side predicting object here. That so we're going to make this object that we have here actually have the input authority on this guy so we understand what happens on this machine here when the simulation is doing that. And later on, we're gonna add another client to see how, how this object is perceived as a proxy on the other machine and we can comment on other topics. Okay, so let's go. So from the perspective of this client here, um, we, I'm gonna ignore here the fact that we have actually a buffer here that if you're using Delta snapshots, that that's used to do the delta compression and so on. That doesn't really matter in this case. What matters to me is this, in this case. We're gonna assume that, so we're gonna assume that we just received what was, so the server is already simulating tick 101, but that doesn't really matter. In this case, what happens is that we just received the data about tick 100. The server actually is simulating tick 101 already, but we didn't have time to receive 101 yet, but we have the data about tick 100. So actually what the client keeps here is the client just received this data. So this is the latest data that you have confirmed from the server. And that's what we call a reset. So every time you receive data from the server, you receive data about all objects that are in your interest, in your interest in case you're using EC with interest management or about all objects on the game world if you're talking about data snapshots. It doesn't matter. You always reset to the data you received on the server and that we're going to simulate forward again with prediction. We're going to get there. But you not only have that, you also have a history of snapshots. Ooh, I, I, we can't see it here. So let me move this guy a little bit to the right here so I can show this guy here. So you have a bit of history of not only 100, which is the one that you just received, but you also have 99, and you may have 98, you may have a, a few more depending on your ping, but let's assume in this case we have these two, 98 and 99 here. So we just receive 100. What happens here then? So the client actually needs to be able to, simul to poll inputs enough ahead that it will be able to send that in time to the server before that simulates the server simulates that tick. So when we just receive 100, it means that we have to probably simulate forward something like, it depends on our ping, but it could be 105, 110, it really depends on the ping to make sure it gets to the server in time. In this case here, we're, we're demonstrating with what would be maybe even like a local network game because we're very close to what the survey is simulating and we just received 100, the server just simulated 101. So maybe let's assume the server has to simulate all the way to 103. Let's say that's two ticks up ahead of the server on a local network. So that means that you just received the data for tick 100. It's already, everything is reset to tick 100, all network variables. So what does is we called, we call, we call fixed update network on all objects, not only on the objects you have input authority for. This is called on every single object, starting with the data that you have on tick 100. And, um, but assuming 
it's uh, the, the difference between input authorities is because those you also get local input for them because it was kept here. So let's assume this is an object we have input authority for on this client, client zero here. So it will simulate forward to tick 101 using the previous data velocity position that you had here and it's going to simulate forward to 101 using the same input that will that's probably was already uh, that is already on the server that the server already also simulated that so that may match but you already did this before we're, we're actually going to the new tick we're going to simulate this is a resim this is a resimulation of tick 101 so say you previously had already also resimulated 102 so you're going to resim that one again using the input that was originally pulled for tick 101 that's already in transit for the server. So you're resiming this guy again. So resim. And your new delta lets you do one extra forward tick. In this case, it could maybe you didn't have time for that and you would use these two, but in this case, we're also calling. So, so this is what's fun here. And we have fun again. And let's let's assume this one here was a forward, was a, the first version, the first time we are simulating tick 103 on this client. So your character is probably going to move here. So what what is prediction? Everything here is prediction. Predict prediction. So. All these ticks are considered prediction. The only tick that we have confirmed from the server is 100. So this tick is verified data. It's snapshot data. Actually, snapshot data is what's a bit behind here. But it's not prediction. Everything else here is prediction. Both resimulations and forward are prediction. So what are the buffers that we keep locally here? We, we keep all the data all the way to Let's, let's put in red the last received data from the server. So this is the data that we have on the, on the snapshot buffer. Do we have copies of this data here? No, we don't, except for the last two. So we'll keep the data about four, the, the, the last predicted tick you have and what we call previous, because as I said, as happened on the server, this is going to be the same here. So this is what, this is what we're going to consider is state. And this is previous. Notice that this is not during the, f the during fixed update network. So, for example, when we call fixed update network here, the network data you have was a copy of what you received on 100. Then you changed it again on resimulation, and now you only have that one copy. And the state is what in your mind is 101. Then you fun is called again, and it's called again. So it's the same data that ends up here. We just create, a, we just do a copy of it for the for the, what we call previous because we're going to need this for interpolation. So let's talk about interpolation then. So with all this data here, what did you choose for this object here? Assuming this guy is a character controller that you are either using our NCC or a network transform, we're going to call, we're going to explain network rigid body later, but this is let's say a network transformer, something that you want to interpolate manually. So what happens here is, this guy has input authority. And you chose interpolation mode auto. What does that mean? That means that the interpolation target, the guy we already know about in green, is going to, when you set auto, it works like this. If the object is a proxy, you would use data from the snapshots because it assumes you are not predicting data. But if it's either on the server, we already explained on the server, it always uses predicted and predicted previous to interpolate. Or the input authority, which is the case, auto defaults to between these two predicted ticks, forward and res uh, the last state you had, no matter if receive or forward, but the last state you have and the previous one. So the rendering is going to be something in between here. And how much in between? This is using what we call state, state alpha. So it is interpolated with that. And, and how, how big is the state alpha? 
it depends on the rendering. It's just like uh, like I explained on the server. You may be rendering on a super fast gaming monitor, 144 or even up uh, hertz, and so you you will be several calls to render interpolating between these two. Or if you do manually on your own rendering, you may even want to extrapolate this guy here until you have enough time to predict a new tick. So that's where you're going to see things. I'm not going to talk about what you see of characters from other machines because this is an object that you were predicting locally. So you're going to be interpolated between these two, not these. But I'm going to explain this when we add the third client that's going to be seeing our character interpolated, uh, interpolated over snapshots. We'll talk about that later. But this guy here is interesting because I want, I want now to explain what happens on so say say we, we were interpolating here, and there is a new unit update. And on this new unit update, there is no new data coming from the server. It's just a super fast rendering new call. So the first one was here. Now we're going to call it around here in, in the accumulated time. So basically, just the interpolation target is going to be moving with the new alpha. Nothing changed, changes on the data. It's the same data. You still have the same, but you're, you may be moving visually the interpolation target. See why it's important that this guy is a separate game object, because you are going to be moving this guy a lot more in rendering than actually re-simulations happen. So, OK, now on the next unit update, we're going to receive new data from the server. So finally, we receive data about 101. What happens when that is the case? So that's going to be the state we're going to reset with. And we still have the buffered data about the snapshot and the history here, some of it. We'll talk about that when we talk about proxies. But the point is now, now we do the same thing again, starting from 101. So we don't, this is not called anymore. So this one is gone. This was this local prediction of fixed update networks not called again to re-simulate 101. You now have 101 as server data. You don't need to re-simulate it. So now we reset everything to this guy. And we call fixed update. Let's reset all this. So we call again 102 as a re-simulation. We call 103 now as re-simulation because it was already simulated before. So we're going to have this guy here. And then how much how much was the delta that we have here? If the delta is enough for us to predict forward 104, we're going to do one more and we'll do a forward tick 404. But if we do not have enough delta for that, it's we still did the, the reset and the re-simulations, but the last one we can actually re-simulate is still 103 because we don't have enough delta to call 104. And our interpolation targets is still going to be these two. Just that the interpolation is going to be much closer to 103 in this case. But let's assume we did have enough deltas. And we're going to actually simulate forward also 104. And it would be for forward. And then in this case, you're, we're going to have the data about these two. And the interpolation is probably going to be closer to 103, but between these two. This is all client-side prediction and client-side smooth interpolation thing. So I'm, I'm not going to explain. No, let, let me explain already. So I can touch the topic again when we go to the next one. But what is then error correction? Because technically, error correction has to do with the interpolation, but it has not to do with this much because we always reset and we re-simulate discreetly. But say this happened. When we first received one, 100. And we simulated forward 101 as resim and 103. But say when we were resimulating 103, we didn't see a character that was going to block us here because we were seeing him on the past. So this other character was somewhere in here. And when you simulate it somewhere in here, say, and you simulate it forward, and you could actually move this guy all the way here on 103. And OK, all good. But when we receive data about 101, this is going to be explained when we talk about snapshots later. But let's say this guy was actually here. So when we re-simulate a second time 103, we will be blocked the movement here and will not be able to move forward on this re-simulation. So now, 
your 103 is not going to be all the way here, it's going to be somewhere in here, and that qualifies as a misprediction. So 103 was mispredicted originally to be here, and it will not be able to go all the way there because there is a new obstacle here. So what happens in this case is that there was a discrepancy between what was 103 when you first resimulated it and what was actually what was 103 on the second resimulation you did. And this is so this is small discrepancy here is the error. And the point is, should we just then, when we recompute 104 here, it will not be on the original positions as you thought, and we just render it here somewhere? No, actually that would snap and create um, little glitches. So what error correction does is it knew that originally 103 was here and 104 it didn't, it actually simulated 104 correctly, but it would not, it would compensate this error here, and it would not interpolate this guy exactly where it should here. It will interpolate between what it, what it, it think it would interpolate it if 104 was not, and 103 were not blocked, and the actual position is smoothing out the error over several ticks. So it basically smooths out these little mispredictions. I may come back to this topic later on because it's, this is quite advanced and it's not, it's not the basic interpolation and you can even uh, turn it off and on again if you need to. So let's, um, let's stop this one here. So this is about client-side prediction of manually controlled data that you call on fixed update network. I'm not talking about rigid bodies. I, m I may talk about rigid bodies later. It's very similar. Actually, any script can do any kind of prediction with anything. But uh, let's stop here on this one. This is the second video, and we're going to come back for the third video, which is going to be proxies. How, how, how do you, what is the relation between... Oh, oh one, one quick thing before we go to that one, sorry. So, so say this is your clients have predicted data, and you're calling fixed update network, and you're always re-simulating forward like this here. Can I still use snapshot visualization of these guys? Yes, you can. So the data is about what you did in fixed update network. And you always have the data that you have from the snapshot buffers and the latest two ticks of predicted data. Maybe for some objects, you do not do anything in fixed update network and these two frames will actually be copies of the last thing you received on the server. So when you have that, which is normally what you do on proxies, it makes little sense to try to, to visualize the predicted data because the predicted data is gonna actually be glitchy because it's a copy of the same data twice, this latest guy here. And you normally just do a snapshot over the snapshots. And we're gonna talk about this on the next video. But when you actually also makes things re-simulate and predict locally, you still have the choice of either showing the predicted version interpolation or the snapshot interpolation, even though the data is here, you can still show this one smoothly, or do extrapolation like I explained before on the survey, you can also do that. So these options are always available. I hope this video helps understand all these, but let's on the next one talk about proxies on another client. So, see you soon.